Every child of God must understand this concept. Are you with me? Every child of God must understand this concept because as you begin to relate with the Holy Ghost, you will encounter these things. So that as you encounter them, you know how to, um, how to make use of them. Are you there? You see, the first thing that, the first reality that will open up to you um, when you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost is the gift. Are you there? The Holy Ghost will not start with you with fruit. It will start with you with what? This is what you must note carefully. I've started my teaching already. The Holy Ghost will not start with you with what? With fruits. It will start with you with what? With gift. Praise the Lord. Now, the reason it's going to start with you with gift is because what you need to function in the gifts is not as tedious as what you need to function in the fruits. The gift of the spirits are for manifestation. Are you there? The gift of the spirits are for what? Manifestation. It is outwards. The gift of the spirits are for manifestations and it is what? Outwards. But the fruit of the spirit is the nature of the spirit and this is inwards. Are you with me? The fruit of the spirit is the what? The nature of the spirit and it is inwards. So the fruit of the spirit is a function of your relationship with the spirit. Your obedience to the spirit is what makes you bear the fruit. Are you with me? So please, one thing we are going to do is we are going to very fast with going to, you know, searching through the scriptures. So we can maximize the little time that we have. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Please, you can get the mic and then let's first Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Yes, there's a mic. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Anybody there? Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles. You were Gentiles. Carry the way on this dumb idol. Yes. Carry the way on to what? This dumb idol. When you say somebody is dumb, what does it mean? It means they cannot what? They cannot speak. Are you with me? So one of the characteristics of idols is that they are what? They are dumb. And then you carry the nature of what you serve. So if you are serving the living God, you are alive. If you are serving a God that is not living, you are a dead man. So if you are serving dumb idols, you are what? You are dumb. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay, let me quickly share a mystery with you. Spirits are moved by consistency. Are you with me? Look at this. For instance, if I erect an image now, maybe the image of a goat, are you with me? And I put it somewhere. That image in itself does not have any power. But I can give power to it. You know what I can do to give power to it? If you consistently come to that image of that goat that you have created, and you begin to bow to it, praying to it every day, to get to a time that you discover that what you tell the God to do for you that day, you will see it that day. You think it's a joke. You do it again the next day. My God, please. And you see the thing happen. You know what has happened? Because of your consistency, a spirit has now possessed the God. So a spirit will now dwell in that image and begin to function from the image. That's what happens to idol worship. It is not the image itself that has the power, but because of their consistency, going there every day, a spirit now find, you know, a spirit tabernacle in that image. Even if it's a spoon that you are bowing to every day, if you are consistent enough, it, will, it can become a God that can make something happen. Because a spirit will possess it. One of the things that spirits are obsessed about is worship. Spirits wants to be worshipped. Spirits loves worship. 
Are you there? Are you with me? All right, please go ahead. That's not our focus anyway. Yes? Even as you were led. Yes, I give you to understand. Yes. Yes. No man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. Yes. And that no man can say. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord. Can you see that? Do you, can you see what the Bible is saying? It says no man can say that Jesus is what is the Lord, but what? Say Jesus is Lord. <laughs> so what's it? Will, therefore means is not verba. Are you there? The word say now we now mean submit. No man can submit to Jesus except he is assisted by the Holy Spirit. Are you there? And no man speaking by the Spirit will call Jesus what? A curse. What does it mean to call Jesus a curse? That's it. Anytime you are trying to put yourself in the image that only Jesus should carry in your life, you are calling him a curse. Are you there? Because in that spot, it is not Jesus that is seen. You are the one that is what? That is seen. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes, please go ahead. Now, now there, are diversities of gifts. there are diversities of gifts. Now, look at this. When you want to learn some things in the scripture, don't just jump to where the thing is. Start from the foundation. Now, uh, the Bible is saying something very important. It's saying there are diversities of gifts, meaning there are a lot of gifts, but all these gifts are what? From what? The same spirit. So, if you come with a gift, and it is of a different spirit, we know you are not from God. So from this, we can even discern the one that is fake from the one that is real. If we know that everything should be what? From the same spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes? And there are differences, of administration. There are differences in administration, yes. But the same, law. But the same what? Law. Yes? And there are diversities of operation. Diversities of operation? You, you will know the word the same. The same. The same. Are you with me? Everything, your gift may not be the same as my gift. But it must be of what? The same spirit. We may not have the same gift, but there must be something that should be common to us. And that is what? The spirit. Everybody here now, we do not have the same number of gifts. But there is something that is common to us. The spirit. The moment it is no longer of the same spirit, it will mean that somebody is functioning by a strange spirit. Are you with me? All right, yes? For the, manifestation of the, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Can you see that statement? The manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to what? To profit. It, it means that every manifestation of the spirit through you is, is done so that you can make profit. So somebody can stay on this scripture now and say, okay, okay, something is happening in your marriage. All right, uh, bring 200,000. I will do something for you. Sir, I thought they said men of God should not uh, collect money. Okay, open to the scripture, and then they will read that place. Can you see? It's given to every man to, I want, let me make my profit first. Then I will. <laughs> That's not what he's saying. The question we will now ask at this point is, Whose profit is to the profit of the one that has given the gift? So the manifestation of the Spirit is given for every man to profit what with thou. Meaning, you must make the profit you will make from this gift must be to the giver of the gift. Are you with me? Continue. Now look at now. Let's take notes now. So one is given by the Spirit. The what? Gifts. Let's note that, everybody. The word of wisdom. Yes. To so another, so another, yes. The word of what? Knowledge, yes. To so another, faith. Same spirit, yes. Healing. Same spirit, yes. Walking of miracles, yes. Yes. To so another, prophecy. To so another, discerning of spirits. Diverse what? 
Yes. That's all right. Diverse what? Kinds of tongues. Then lastly, uh-huh. Interpret what? Interpretation of tongues. If you count, you see that it is nine, right? Is it nine? Huh? Please sit. Let's dwell on this first. Please pay attention to me. Pay attention. Amen. <clears throat> you see, the first one that was mentioned here is what? The word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. This word of wisdom functions with all trans. Are you there? A man that is ministering with all trans will be functioning with the gift of the word of knowledge. Uh, the, the word of wisdom. Are you with me? There is no all trans without the word of wisdom. Are you there? So when you, when you see, when you pray for all trans, what you are actually praying for is what? The words of wisdom. Now, the words of wisdom is what makes you say something common in an uncommon way. Are you there? Something that everybody knows. You just come and you explain it and people are, are you there? They are surprised. That is the words of what? Of wisdom. So the words of wisdom functions with what? Utterance. Are you there? That's what makes you tap into the wisdom of God. With this gift, you can, you can, you can tap into God's wisdom. Are you there? And when you talk, people will know that what you are saying, the, the wisdom with which you are speaking is, is beyond you. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, the words of knowledge has to do with things in the past. Are you there? The words of knowledge is past. Prophecy is future. Are you with me? I have to do this jumping because they are somehow related. Word of knowledge is what? Is past. Prophecy is what? Future. So by word of knowledge, I can come to this, my beloved brother now, and say, in your family, there's also a number of children. As a matter of fact, two weeks ago, this, this, this happened in your family. Who is so, so, so person? Ah, it's my auntie. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm seeing her now. Around somewhere in local jail. Say, yes, yes, yes. She's just... <laughs> That's word of what? Of knowledge. Word of knowledge helps you to know things that happens when you are not there. Are you there? So it has to do with the past events. Things that has happened when you are not there. But by the word of knowledge, you can pick it. Are you getting what I'm saying? The next one is what? Now, the gift of faith is instantaneous. Are you there? Because all these gifts are the manifestations of the Spirit. Are you there? But this faith now is not nature. This one is instantaneous. When I say instantaneous, what do I mean? I'm referring to something that suddenly springs up when needed. A man that is fearful can still function with this gift of faith. You just see that when that situation arises, that boldness will just come. That's the gift of faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if we go further and we go to fruit, you will also see faith there. So faith can be fruit. Faith is also a gift. But faith as a gift is instantaneous. It comes up when needed. Are you there? But as a fruit, it is your nature. So you are always living by faith. The just shall what? Live by faith. That faith there is not gift. It's what? Fruit. Meaning, the just shall live by faith being their nature. Are you with me? All right. The next one is what? Healing. Healing is for sick people. You have HIV, fibroid, whatever it is. Are you there? They pray for you and it goes. That's gift of faith. So, these gifts are the manifestations of the Spirit. The way the Spirit moves you. Are you there? You are not the one moving yourself, but it's the Spirit that is what? That is moving you. Are you with me? The next one is what? Working of what? Miracles. Working of miracles is also similar to this, but it's not the same thing. This one has to do with sickness majorly, but this one involves deformity. Replacement of organs. 
I've heard the case of somebody who have no high, no, there was no eyeball there. The socket is just, this place is just blank, plastered. This place too is plastered. And the man of God placed his hands there and prayed and blood gushed out. And you see two eyes coming out. That's working of miracles. When you see lame, rise, that's what? Working of miracles. When you see dumb, you know, they can hear, those, you know, those that cannot talk are talking. The, you know, those that cannot walk are walking. That's what? Working of miracles. But when you see sick people getting healed, that's what? Healing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The next one is what? Prophecy. Prophecy is futuristic. By prophecy, you say things that is about to happen by the Spirit of God. So you can say, okay, uh, in the beginning of next year, there's going to be, you know, in the first five months, there's going to be this, this, this. And after the first five months, then we enter into another season. But towards the ending, this, this, this will happen. That's prophecy. Are you there? Anytime you prophesy, you talk about what? The future. But when you give word of knowledge, you are talking about what? The past. Are you with me? The next one is what? The sounding of what? Of spirit. The Bible says you should test all what? Test all spirits so that you can know the one that is of God. You cannot test spirits if you cannot discern spirits. So by, discern, by discernment, you know the spirit that is of God and you know the one that is not of God. A spirit that is from the devil can also tell you good things, can tell you godly things, can quote the scripture. It happened to Paul the Apostle. They were going one time and a, a girl speaking by the spirit of divination was shouting, Hey, man of God, man of God, are you there? And Paul said, Shh. And he casted out that spirit. He did not say, Okay, now, now, because this girl is saying we are men of God. I know I'm a man of God, so okay, you are speaking by the spirit. That statement was correct, but the spirit that is saying that thing was not right. So that means a right statement can come from a wrong spirit. That's what many of us do not know. So because the man of God came to your family and said, okay, your mother gave birth to two. Okay, your mother is a nurse. You now think he's a man of God. No. A wrong spirit can what? Can say something that is right. That's why we still need to what? Test all spirits. So we test spirits by discerning spirits. Are you with me? The next one is what? Diverse what? Diverse kinds of tongues. Praise God. This one now has two divisions. You have the known, you have the known tongues and the unknown tongues. You have the known tongues and the what? And the unknown tongues. The known tongues is the tongues of men. The unknown tongues is what? Is the tongues of angels. Are you with me? Or you can say spirits. Are you with me? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Let's read that quickly. First Corinthians 13, verse 1. Yes. Yes. I am as sounding Now, take that again. Take that again. Though, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have no charity. Can you see that? The tongues of men and what? The tongues of what? Angels. Can you see that? That's, thank you, see please. That means, now, there, Apostle Paul is talking about the known and the what? And the unknown. The known is the tongues of men. The unknown is the tongue of what? Angels. Tongues of spirits. Are you with me? But one thing is, for the fact that I said known and unknown, does not mean, one does not need interpretation. Both of them needs what? Interpretation. So let's go to the book of Acts. I want to show you an example of the, the, the known, the tongues of men. Acts chapter 2 from verse 2. Acts chapter 2 from and verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. A sound from heaven was of a rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it filled all the house where they were. Yes. And there appeared unto 
them. Yes. It's chosen from like as a fire. Yes. And it sat upon each it sat upon them. each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the Spirit gave them other tongues. Yes. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance, yes. And they were, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Yes. Jews, both men. Yes. Out of every nation. Yes. Every. Yes. yes. Now when he was voiced abroad. Yes. The multitude came together. Now look at when the tongues, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they began to speak in tongues. Am I right? Yes, continue. Look at what happened. Yes. The multitude came together. They came together. And were confounded. They were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Thank you. Can you see what happened there? The tongues that they were speaking was the tongues of men. And the Holy Ghost came upon them. Do you know what happened when the people came? They, one can be speaking in Spanish. One is speaking in Indonesia. Are there? And those people now came as, ah. This one is speaking our dialect. And it's not even from our country. Are you there? And I was say, ah, this one is speaking. Are you there? That's it. So by the spirit, you can speak other people's tongues. That is known tongues, the tongues of men. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was what happened to these people when the spirit of God came upon them. There are ministers that went that went to territories, they don't, they have not been there before, and they began to speak. The language of that territory. That's the, the known tongues. The tongues of men. It is by the spirit. Are you with me? The other one, the unknown tongue, is what? The tongues of what? Of angels. That's what you do when you are speaking in tongues. Say, okay, let's begin to speak in tongues. That's what you do. You are speaking the tongues of the spirit. And look at this. Spiritual things are so designed in such a way that you cannot sin with them. Because they came from the one that is incorruptible. So it is hard for you to really corrupt it. That's why you see that speaking in tongues, you cannot fight with it. You cannot abuse your friend with it. I made an illustration, um, I made an illustration for you some time ago, but it was funny. But that's the truth. Can you be fighting with your neighbor and begin to speak in tongues? And person two will speak again. Liko brahada seli brahada. It, you will look like a mad person. <laughs> it's because the spirit of God that gave that utterance, they, it has been guarded. The old man is corrupt, but there's no way, even if you try to corrupt it, it will not. Are you there? That's why one of the purest ways to communicate with, to, with God is to speak in tongues. Because that language you are using is not corrupted. You see, this language I'm using to teach you now is a corrupt language. But because of what I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you the mysteries of God. This mystery I'm teaching now is I purified this language. Because with this same thing, I can say your head is like that. But I can't say it with speaking in tongues. So this our normal language is only purified when you begin to communicate mysteries of the kingdom. Apart from that, it's a defied language. So God now gave us another means to communicate with it, which is the, the, this. Are, are, are you getting what I'm saying? Now look at this. So, interpretation of tongues now. Anytime you speak in tongues, there's a need for what? Interpretation. Because when you are speaking in tongues, what you are doing is you are edifying who? Yourself. I may not be able to go to fruits today. Maybe next Sunday I'll go to fruits. But let's quickly check um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. I want to show us something there. He that in an yes, he that speaks in an unknown tongue. Yes. Now, if you are speaking in an unknown tongue, what are you doing? Okay, now look at me. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for a few seconds? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, hold on. Hold on. That thing you are doing, what are you doing to yourself? Huh? You are identifying yourself, not your neighbor. There's nothing this tongue is doing to your neighbor. So if you get to now, you begin to shout, men, they men, you are disturbing them. It's a disturbance. Many of you do not know. So when they cast you out of the house, they say, these people are not godly. <laughs> they can't pick anything. So if you want to pray among people who are not, if you know you are not among brethren, pray in your understanding. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. By doing that, people around you can pick some of the things you are saying and pray in that direction. They will profit. 
Oh, when you are there, you go to go to go. I don't know what I'm saying. Continue. There's a place I'm going. Either speak it, no, 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 don't get fired himself. You are defying yourself. But either prophesy it, yes. edify it to the church. He either now prophesies, what does he do? The church can benefit from prophecy, not speaking in tongues. Because speaking in tongues is just for your own edification. Because when you prophesy, at least the whole church knows what will happen in time to come. So everybody is at alert. Are you with me? Continue. I would that ye all speak with tongues. Yes. But rather that he prophesied. Yes. For greater is he that prophesied yes. than he that speaketh with tongues. Now you read this now. You say, okay, the Bible is saying, okay, the one that has the gift of prophecy is greater than uh, what? The one that speaks. No, that's not it. The gifts are not greater than each other. The word greater there means it's better. It is better to prophesy when you are in a large garden. So that everybody at least will go with a, 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 an assurance of tomorrow. Are you with me? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what? Please sit. Now let me now do something that is six please. There are still some things. So when you get home, you can still read this 14 downwards. Now let me now say something that may look a bit strange. What now happens when you now go online and now download somebody speaking in tongues for two hours? I'm wasting your time. Is it not what you have seen in the scripture? The man Shele Kabarida, he did it for three hours. Thank God. He has edified himself. So you want to tap into that self-edification. Yeah. You don't need it. But if he's praying in his understanding, Lord mercy. And you could hear prayer point, you can download that one. That one will edify you. You can get instrumental. Are you there? But you cannot say you want to go and download somebody speaking in tongues. You know we have it online now. Tongue of Shakwa. <laughs> Uh, the way I'm speaking to you now, you think I know it. No, it's when we are doing this thing, when I'm trusting the Lord to give me insight. That's so, we are just learning it today now, because me too, I, I thought it was right. And the Lord told me there's no point doing it, because the person you are listening to is edifying himself. If you read for the apostle, I speak in tongue more than ye all. Are you there? Meaning that Paul understands these things. Are you there? When you come to the garden of believers and you discern that these people are not really they, they are not just speaking in some kind of idea. Pray in your understanding. So that others can also work. So the reason I will say, let's pray in the Holy Ghost is because I know we are in the gathering of brethren. Everybody can pray in the Holy Ghost. It's not like somebody will be feeling like, I'm the only one that is afflicted by the devil. Lord, <laughs> <laughs> when will this bandage be over? <laughs> are you with me? So the gift of the Spirit is not enough. You need the fruit of the spirit. I can't teach the fruit because of that. I will just say this as I close. The gift of the spirit is not what? No. You need what? The fruit. The, you know, Jesus did not say by their gift we shall know them. What did he say? By their fruit. By their fruit. So therefore means that even the gift means nothing to Jesus. Though it means something, but the weight that fruit has, that gift has, is not cannot be compared to that of what? Fruit. Don't worry, in the next teacher, I'm going to show us the fruit of the Spirit. Then you will know it's not the same thing. That's when you can see a man who just, who just raised the dead now. And then you see you see him fighting with all his strength. After the fight, say that, I just say, Mama, after you now smuggle the man and you bring him into the house, then you say, give him two minutes. Thank you, Father. Shabika. <laughs> If you come, if you come with only gift, you will end up as fake. Yes, mm, you end up as fake. Meanwhile, gift is what the world wants. They want you to come and say, oh. <laughs> I used to do it. But thank God I'm not coming with only gift. I <laughs> say, mm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm seeing something now. I'm seeing something now. I'm seeing. And you're saying, say, yes, sir, yes, sir. They want to tell you, okay, when you were eating rice this morning, you spoon, you spoon. Say yes, sir. <laughs> Somebody say, mmm, mmm, mmm. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, 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 in your, then you hear something like, in your kitchen, in your kitchen. I'm seeing some pots there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let me tell you this as I random. Something happened. Oh. In a woman's shop, somebody came to steal something. And a prophet came. Some of these, I, I won't describe the people. Came with the garment and said, I'm a prophet of God. He said, something, something was stolen here. The man said, hmm. And he came out with a word. He said, I see a hand. Take the money. That was all. <laughs> and I told myself, I said, is it leg that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. I said, thank you, Father.